All right, hi guys, this is Mitch. Just a quick video here on the parcel data that I'll be sending you, or maybe you've received already, but basically the parcel data is coming from your local county GIS folks, and then I'll just kind of show you what I'm gonna do to kind of make it more useful, I think, for you. Um, so basically, we just go and add the data. Uh, I'm gonna use Hubbard County as an example. And to start with, um, you know, every county's parcel data is structured a little bit differently. Uh, but generally speaking, there's um, you know, pin numbers, there's uh, acreage fields, there's a number of different columns for uh, name, address, um, location, that sort of thing. Uh, there's legal description often. The ones that I've added to all the ones in my uh, work area are kind of from this public type SFIA all the way over to the right. Uh, I also have a standardized parcel field that's... Um, you know, the same for everybody. So what we're going to do here is just uh, we're going to kind of uh, do a few things. First I'm going to freeze the acres column and maybe the name column. That way they'll be there when we scroll over. So let's say the first thing we want to do is isolate all the parcels that are greater than 20 acres. Uh, there's a couple different ways to do that. You could right click and sort, um, you know, high to low, or you could do select by attributes. So let's say we're going to do select by attributes. Uh, you'll see in the box down here. If you double click, it'll put um, the acres field down there. And then we'll just use our um, greater than or equal. And uh, we could either do unique values, which would give us every single value in the table. Uh, or we could just say greater than or equal to and put in 20. So once we hit apply, that will select out everything greater than 20 uh, acres. And you'll see that on the map quite a bit. One thing we could do then is if we wanted that into a separate um, table, we could go data, export data, and kick that out to um, a separate shape file. What I'm going to show you, though, is kind of a different way to work with the data using the definition query. And I think this is a little bit easier to work with. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of uh, creation of new databases. So we're going to do acres, and this is again in definition query not a selection we're basically defining what's going to show up so we'll do acres greater than or equal to 20 hit OK and you'll see there's some white uh, that shows up on the map where the parcels that were smaller than 20 acres uh, appeared so now you know uh, we're down to about 8400 parcels and if I take that definition query away <clears throat> it'll show everything we're back to 29,000 514 parcels. Definition of query doesn't change any of the data, it just defines what shows up. And that can be a pretty big advantage. Another way that you can use the definition query is to say, well, let's take out all this public land, the state, county, city land. Because um, I did go through each of the, uh, each parcel and, and kind of pick out if it was county or state and so that's this public type column so we're gonna say okay acres is greater than 20 and we're gonna say that that field called public type does not equal that's a symbol for not equal um, if you hit get unique values it'll give us options so it'll say it doesn't equal county and then we'll go and public type does not equal city and public type does not equal federal and public type does not equal school district and public type does not equal state. We'll leave the other potlatch in there because uh, that's a privately, um, privately held parcel. So basically we're saying just show me the 20 acre parcels that are basically not uh, public lands. So if we hit that, we go from 5,600, um, I think it was 8,300 8, or something down to 5,600. And you'll see here if we do a sort that uh, there's nothing that shows up in the public type anymore for state, federal lands, that sort of thing. Some of you ha will have tribal lands in your. Um, parcels and that's just another thing you could turn off as well 
So what does that look like? Well, there's what's left when we take out the public lands and the, land, and the, the lands that are greater than uh, 20 acres remain as well. You'll see the some of these parcels also include lakes. Um, and so we could either take those out or um, you can do a sort by the name. And generally speaking, the ones that don't have a name are going to be you know, right away or um, lakes. I think maybe in some cases I deleted all these out. Um, I'll show you just how to delete those quick. Now that you've selected them, you go start editing. I always do start editing from the, you know, from the by right clicking on the parcel. And you have about 203 that are selected. Again, there's not a lot of attributes because they are just um, additional features. So they don't do you much good. So we'll get rid of those, delete selected, and uh, we will go editor menu, stop editing, and those will be gone. All right, so the other thing we can do, nope, still, still thinking. All right, here we go. So the other uh, fields that I added, you'll see there's one for SFIA, that's the um, Sustainable Forest Incentives Act. Uh, so it's simple yes or no if they're enrolled in SFIA. And if they are, it'll, it'll have the acreage, and that data comes from the Department of Revenue. Uh, FSP, Forest Stewardship Plan, that comes from DNR. Uh, there's potentially some Forest Stewardship Plans that are still out there that individuals got, but the ones that are registered and certified by DNR over the course of time will show up. And then if they're current, in other words, if they are um, you know, within the last 10 years, then they'll have a yes by them. And so you'll see this one here has a forest stewardship plan or woodland stewardship plan, but it's not current. Uh, forest 2C, that's the managed forest uh, 2C tax class. Uh, that's an annual sign up at the local assessor's office. So this data came from the assessors in each county. And it's either yes or no. Easement um, comes from a variety of sources. It could come from Minnesota Land Trust. Uh, it could be a RIM easement through Bowser. Uh, it could be forced for the future easement through DNR. I think that's those are the main ones. And these would be perpetual conservation easements they would not include um, simple like access easements or even like trout stream easements, which are just right along the stream. These are <clears throat> bigger, broader, you know, generally parcel based um, or you know, easements that include the whole parcel. So what we can do based on those new fields, is we can add to our definition query. say okay from these parcels let's set and SFIA is also a yes so now we get down to all the, the from all 29,000 parcels we're down to just the ones that are SFIA so we could change the symbology let's say we we're going to do orange we can change the name Uh, let's say you want to do that again. You can right click copy and then paste. It'll be the same, it's pulling from the same source data that you had before, the Hubbard parcels. It just has the same definition query. So let's say we want to change that to for stewardship plan. Um, better yet, let's do current Ford stewardship plan, so the Ford stewardship plan, underscore C-U-R-E-N, equals yes. So we swapped out SFIA for Ford stewardship plans, equals yes. So these will show all the current Ford stewardship plans in the county. Uh, a lot of them will overlap with SFIA, because they're is required. 
Um, so we need to change that title. The key is to remember what you got going on here. Remember what definition queries you have on. And let's paste another one in there. But uh, let's change change it to and easements equals yes. So we're still looking at 20 acre parcels. Actually, you know what? Let's drop down because SFIA requires 20, but some easements may be smaller. So we'll just go and say easement equals yes. Because there shouldn't be pub any public lands anyway that have an easement on them. So here we go. These are the easement lands. And let's see, let's paste it again. And this one will go to C. to C equals yes. And we can call that green. So there you go, there's your forest to C lands. They shouldn't be the same as SFIA at all. So that gives you a picture of some of those uh, forested lands that are in some sort of protected state, even if it's temporary. So I think that's just kind of the, the main stuff I want to show is some of the ways that you can then uh, use that. And once you have that definition query on, like I say, it just shows those fields and it just shows those uh, attributes of those ones that meet that criteria. So this will be all yes. So there's 195 parcels in 2C. So let's say you want to do a mailing and see if they're interested in SFIA or something more permanent. You could select all, and then right click, copy selected. You need to keep that window open, and, and then you can go to Excel, and just paste it right into Excel. And then you can, you, know, you may have to kind of rename some of the fields there to make them meaningful, but uh, essentially then in, in Excel, you have your mailing list. So that's kind of, again, a quick and easy way to you know, use this parcel data. Um, of course, you could always export this data into a separate uh, file too, a separate sheet file. Um, another way to do it would be, let's say we want to select within a certain watershed. This will be the last thing we kind of go over. This quick layers is pretty handy. It's got all kinds of DNR layers. Let me know if you're interested in having me get that stuff for you. But let's say we turn on um, this major watershed 12, which is the Crowing River. Let's say we want to select all of the two seed lands just in that um, watershed. So we're gonna we're gonna go to make this the only selectable layer. So we're going to, we're going to select the Crowing River, then we're going to go select by location. Now we want to pick from those forest 2C lands that are intersecting, or we could say within, either way. And we just want to use that selected watershed. So we hit OK, and there we go. It'll highlight all the, the ones in the forest 2C that are in that watershed. And there's two, 250 out of the 395. So those are the ones that we could then do a mailing list for. Again, copy selected and then open up um, Excel and paste it right in. So just some simple ways to kind of select and use some of your parcel data. As always, if you have any questions, just give me a call and uh, we'll help you through it. Thanks.